your photography sucks and you have no idea why and I'm horrible to say this but this happens to everybody so we're going to go through some reasons why your photography might suck and what you can do to stop it now please be aware we are adults so we all know that at times we can all suck at photography these are some of the things I've noticed more prevalent when I'm in the Facebook group talking about why some photography isn't working or what problems they're having so let's go through them I hope they're right because you might have other reasons why the photography sucks. The way I'm on a squeaky chair because we've just got into the office and my office chair broke. So the first reason why your photography might suck is because you are just using whatever lights there. That's not to mean that you haven't got beautiful light but you're not using it to its full potential or understanding to look for the light. Photography is about seeing light and shadows and if you are not able to recognize good light, bad light, and by the way I have this mindset that there is no bad light just not appropriate light for what you're trying to photograph. So if you're trying to do high fashion perhaps soft dreamy isn't what you're wanting maybe you want that stark mid daylight but you have to work with the lights available and understand that the light really does impact how your images come out and so you need to be able to recognize good light and bad light depending on what project you're doing because we so easily settle and that doesn't mean all oh, natural light photographers don't know what they're doing or you've got to use off camera flash or whatever right just being able to use light artificial or natural to the best of your abilities is something that's going to set you apart now this one i've seen quite a few times and this is uh, white balance where people don't really understand how white balance works and they are not using it properly now your white balance doesn't actually have to be exactly how it is in in the photo you're taking you can make it warmer cooler add a bit of tin do whatever you want with it but using a white balance effectively to understand your images can really help sometimes you photograph an image and the skin tones are all off but you don't understand how white balance works so you're not sure what to do seriously check your white balance and be aware that shooting in certain types of light does change the white balance significantly this is why we say shoot in raw or raw equivalent so that you have the means to adjust on that note not shooting in high quality enough digital files digital resolution revolution and not shooting high quality enough so i in the past have just shot in jpeg and i felt for me this is when i was on a full frame it was not good it turned out awful and i had loads of problems well this is when i first started so i started shooting in raw and i found that i had so much more leeway to correct any small errors i made but also i was able to get a higher quality image because i wasn't working with less image if that makes sense because jpeg is obviously a compressed version of a raw of a, of a raw and so i think that's how you say so basically I favor shooting in raw all the time and then I can have more information to work with in post-processing another one that is a problem is a poor choice of equipment so often we'll grab off cameras and we'll go right I'm off to shoot and we'll grab a 50 mil and we won't understand the limitations and the capabilities of our 50 mil so then we go right I need this lens but we haven't actually fully exhausted the ability of our 50 mil lens we haven't fully exhausted the kit lens that we've got and understood its capabilities because once you can get a good photo of that and you understand what predicament and it leaves you in it when you want to go a bit further or it doesn't quite punch in as much you can actually then make informed decisions on the next equipment that you're going to purchase because so often i see people going from a kit lens to a massive zoom lens and then thinking oh why can't i take decent portraits another thing that might be affecting your photography and the reason why it might suck is because you are literally choosing the wrong time of day be it you want uh, you want misty sunrise and you're going too late or you're going too early or perhaps you're going to a location where it's too busy you're not doing research on sunset sunrises the weather what what weather's going to hit when when's the location super busy this is down to you not pr 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 this is down to you not planning your photo shoot effectively. You need to plan your timings. Sometimes you will make the mistake and it'll be work out okay. But if you're chasing sunsets and sunrises, you need to get there earlier than they are. So you're ready to go. They are short and they are fast. There's a joke between me and my friends that everyone finds the clarity slider eventually on Lightroom and, eventually, and you'll see everybody's clarity slider shoot right up. I've done it, most of my friends have done it. And this is where when we get so involved we over process the image now there are certain types of photography that have that aesthetic that have that look but sometimes even a simple portrait can be overworked and lose its appeal the super plastic skin can really fall out of favor of people and so often people don't understand that you you need to get as much right in camera there's no point trying to save it in photoshop if you're not getting the bare bones right in camera so often we allow the camera to do all the settings for us by shooting in auto there's nothing hugely wrong with it but if you if you know what the settings are however your camera being handed the reins to create the image it, it thinks through its digital processes 
isn't necessarily going to get you the best picture. You're a photographer, so you need to step up and change what it is that you want. Maybe you want a faster shutter speed, you want more in focus, all of this. And that's the problem when you are not looking at your settings to adjust them accordingly to the scene that is in front of you. You make the mistake, so if you allow the camera to do it, it can easily overcompensate, undercompensate, not get the right thing in focus. So take control and understand how your camera works. One of the ones that leads on for that is a poor choice of focal length or depth of field. So sometimes people will choose the wrong focal length for the image they're trying to capture, or they'll choose the wrong depth of field. So you will choose, I know, an F1.8, because you've got a 1.8, so you'll stick with the f1.8 and forget that when you're shooting group shots you're more likely going to miss focus and they're going to be slightly fuzzy so think about that like people will use an 85 mil to capture a family portrait and go all the way back and wonder why they're but they when they zoom in their people are pixelated because you need to use the right focal length. yes you can get that compression but you have to, you can't then punch into that picture as much as you wish you could you can on some mirrorless but you're still losing lens um, image quality pick the right focal length for the image that you are capturing not understanding your equipment. So often people go out and they'll buy all this really expensive equipment without actually understanding what it's used for and what its capabilities are. Don't rush off and buy the latest lens or the latest camera body if you can't even use the one you're using now. Because it doesn't matter how much money you throw at a lens, it will not do what you want it to do if it doesn't get told the right thing. Some lenses are not capable of doing exactly what you want, but you've bought into the market that you need to buy this. So I'm, I know someone who spent an absolute fortune on a telescopic lens and then used it once because she just couldn't figure out how to use it and I remember sitting there thinking geez why did you do it oh because that's what everyone else was using but yet she wasn't even shooting that subject she just assumed that understand your equipment before you start adding to it because if you do not you are going to waste valuable time and money and lose education because you are not trying and pushing your lens and your equipment to the very end you are instead going I'm not really sure what to do about this so if I get a better lens it must have the answers the lenses don't have the answer it's the user Learn how to operate your equipment. This is just one I see sort of pretty much all the time. When you look at an image, you need to see what it is the photographer wanted you to see. If the frame is too busy, if there's too much going on, and that isn't adding to the image, like there are some great ones where you see a busy beach, that makes sense. But if there is something where people are like, oh yeah, look at this picture of the bride, and there is just so much going on around it, that is gonna look like a cluttered image. There's a difference between cluttered and deliberate. And sometimes you just need to move to a side or you have to push something out of the way or you have to recompose or whatever. But you need to start decluttering your image if that is the look you're going for. Because if it gets too busy and it takes away from the subject, it's not good. Everything in the frame should add to the image, not take away from it. One of the things I see is people plan or don't plan and then either stick too rigidly to the plan or don't stick to the plan. You need to find the happy medium. I suggest if you're working with clients or people, definitely plan your shoot. If you're going off on a location, plan the shoot, but don't stick so rigidly to it. Now, if you're booked for a client and they want headshots, definitely stick to headshots, but get the, the proper classic headshots out of the way and then at the end of the session, maybe have a little play around with some more creative ones. Because if you stick too rigidly, you're not gonna expand. But if you don't know when to stick to the plan also, you are not gonna get the images that you plan to get and that can leave you on the back foot. As you can tell, I'm dressed like Buddy the Elf is near Christmas Day. I am not very well at all today. So do me a solid, click like, click the bell, whatever it is. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the soon. Remember, just because your images suck today, they're not gonna continually suck. And we all go through the imposter syndrome of feeling like we suck at this, okay? You, just work your way through the checklist and see if it's not really the camera it's just because you're not thinking or you're too overthinking that made sense anyway see you later bye